lovely listeners. Welcome back to another episode of DRL where we're talking everything dating, relationships, and love. Um, I have some really bad news. So the other day on Instagram, the day count with Chris and I was at 20. And as most of you know, when we get to 21, we're going to get engaged. And so on the faithful day 20, um, we had an incident. And so we went right back to zero. Now, I have to say this. Um, I think that the incident was on my part. I think it was because there are still some things that I think that we need to work through. We're working through those things, but it's something that I don't want to rush until those things are handled and we're on the same page. So... I, I kind of hate to break the bad news. I know there's some disappointment out there and within myself. But here's the thing about marriage. When I get into it, it's forever. And so if there's some issues, like, I'm not going to be married just to be married. Like, I'm going to work it out on the front end, not the back. So we're working these things out, and I will definitely keep you guys posted. Um, today with me, I have Akila and Paul. So Akila is one of my nearest and dearest friends, and I've known her forever, ever. She uh, moved to Minnesota, and then we spent plenty of Thanksgivings together at my parents' house playing Scrabble. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Akila. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for always bringing the stuffing, because as a Jamaican family, um, you know, that really wasn't our specialty. Like, we really tried our best to participate in American Thanksgiving, and we threw down on a good fried turkey. Um we had some good sort of sides, but like as Jamaicans, like stuffing isn't native to us. So we just threw usually some stove shop together, put some stuff in it and called it stuffing. Like that wasn't our main dish. Like our main dish was kind of the curry goat and the rice and peas. And so the, everything else was just like, a, I guess we have to have it here because people are going to expect it. But like, we don't really want this here. So yeah. And let me say the first time I ever had stove top stuffing <laughs> <laughs> was at your house. And I spent about eight Thanksgivings with you and your family. And it was the first Thanksgiving. And I said, oh, no, I'm bringing my grandma's cornbread dressing because I cannot have this bread fluff. But everything else, like the goat, your daddy's turkey, loved everything else. <laughs> Sorry, it's just like we don't do stuffing in Jamaica. I now understand. So you recently moved to Texas mm -hmm. from Minneapolis. Yep. Um, how long has it been? It's been a year. And how, how has the transition been? The transition has been really, really good. I relocated to Texas for a new job opportunity. So what was starting out dating like in Texas? Because you were single when you moved there. I was single when I moved there. And I felt like I had the juice in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> because I was in Minnesota for nine years, right? Right. And I was in a three-year relationship when I was there. Then for my last two years, I was single there. And I didn't get on any apps there because I figured I knew the entire black population. Like, there's not going to be a new black man that I meet on Tinder in Minnesota. And that's really how it is in Minnesota. Like, you know one black man, you know them all. Right, right. And it's it's a really, very small community of professional black people. And it's some really good guys that are out there. But I moved to Texas and I was very intentional about getting involved, going to Urban League Young Professional events, going to random happy hours. And I would meet guys out and about and so my first four months or so I'd have a lot of different guys that I meet and go on dates with and then it kind of slowed down because I was looking at quantity over quality mm -hmm. just because I was excited <laughs> like, I, I felt like I had the juice that's so. what it is when you move to a new city though like I think that's the best part like the best part for me when I moved to San Francisco was just like there's all these new people I don't even know yet. Let's go. Like, let's go on a different date every night. Same thing when I was single in New York. It was just like, let's do this. Like, it was, I, dating is fun for me. Yeah. Like, I love, like, first dates. Like, people hate them, but I, I, I think it's, like, a fun sport. Yeah. So, I, I agree. It was, it was very, very fun. And then I kind of got to a point around month six or so when I was there and thought, Akila, what do you want? And I want to be in a committed relationship. I want to find somebody whose time I enjoy, all those different things. And so I started to slow down on who I was going out with and really just kind of think, 
okay, do I like you? Yes or no? Should we go out? Can we further this conversation? I actually then got on an online dating site because... Which one? So I did Tinder and Coffee Meets Bagel. Okay. One of my work friends, actually, he used to always go out with all these girls that he would meet on Tinder. And he was like, Akilah, get on Tinder. And I was like, I'm meeting all of these people. I don't need to get on Tinder. And I hadn't done Tinder before because I was in a relationship for three years. Mm -hmm. Um, But I got on Tinder and I had a good experience. You know, I chatted with some guys. I actually ended up meeting Paul, the guy that I'm currently dating, from Tinder. Hi, Paul. Paul's also here with us today. Hello. How's it going? Going well. (laughs) So you met Paul. What was different to begin with? Or could you tell right away? I don't. Well, I could tell when we met each other. Well, and actually, I can tell from our conversations. We matched in the morning one day. (laughs) And (laughs) it was a Tuesday around 8 a.m. It was a Thursday morning. (laughs) Actually, <laughs> so we, let's make this factual. <laughs> we matched on a Thursday morning and uh, my first I reached out to him first because it said he was like 200 miles away. And I had just you're came, in Dallas and I'm in Dallas mm. 2000 miles away. And I just came from Houston and I was on Tinder and what I was in Houston and my Tinder location accuracy was messing up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, he's handsome. I'm hope he's really not 2000 miles away because <laughs> I, I can't do 2,000 miles. I would like to meet this man. So I message him and I say, are you really 2,000 miles away? Where do you live? <laughs> that was your approach? Where do you live? Because I don't do 2,000 miles. And he was like, I live in Dallas, but I was traveling from New York. And so that's why my location said I was that far. I was like, oh, okay. Then we were did maybe about three or four more messages. And he was like, I'd like to call you. He gives me a ring. What like, were the three or four more messages? We, we got to give people how to's oh, on how successful relationships oh, yes. end up happening. So like, what was the, so she said, you're 2000 miles away. Is that for real? And then what, what happened between then and let's meet. So I don't remember all of the exact messages. So I am, how tall am I? I'm five, nine. And in my profile, I, I have must be five, nine or above. <laughs> that's, that's something else. Right. And, so he complimented me and I was like, thank you. And then I asked, or no, he said, I'm not 5'9". Is that okay? <laughs> How tall are you? 5'10". He's 5'10". 5'10". And so actually I went to But work. why did you say you were not 5'9 if you're 5'10"? I was just messing with her. I was going to tell her I was 5'8". and See what she said. Okay, got it, got it. And so I don't know if you know this. I went to work and I was talking to my friend Jess and I was like, this guy, he looks attractive, but he said he's not 5'9". Should I try to meet up with this guy? I don't know. Were you really about to scrap it just based on that? Yes. Really, though? I feel like height has a part of attraction, you know? It's I, I wouldn't date him if he was five, seven. OK, so that being said, so let's say you said he was attractive in his pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, the conversation at this point seemed to be going well mm-hmm. or like you were at least interested in knowing more. And with that, had he said and had he really been like, oh, I'm five, seven, you'd have been like, OK, well, good luck in your search. Like you, you just would have dropped it at that. I would have. That is so superficial. I am. <laughs> <laughs> On Tinder, height matters. I know because every man on there puts like sometimes in their profiles, all they will have if they're if they're six foot or over, they per, for sure put it. They're like six two. And that's it. And I'm like, right. there's Maybe. nothing more to say about yourself. There are no six feet tall men. You're either five eleven and three quarter or six one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. They were like six three. And the man that just had their height, I would reject. But my friend was like, Akiva, you have all these arbitrary things. Like, does this really matter? If yeah. you thought that he was attractive. Why don't you move forward? I was like, do I have these arbitrary things that don't matter that I'm looking for in a guy? And I was like, hmm, maybe a little bit. Height isn't the end of the world, but he is taller than me. (laughs) So how did the meeting up happen? Like who asked who out and what happened? He asked me to lunch. We were we talked on the phone later on that night, maybe for about 15 or so minutes. It was a really good conversation. And I had mentioned I was working from home the next day. And he said, oh, I'm working from home, too. Would you like to meet up for lunch? You know that one song where it's like, we can work from home. Uh, uh. Do you know the song? No. I do it's, not. It's, it's, a, it's like a pop top 40 teeny bopper song. Most adults wouldn't know I was it. Say, but we need to look it up because we do work from home together. We can work from home. Uh, 
uh, I'll find it for you guys. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That, that, that would be our anthem. Sometimes I call him my, my work from home babe because we work from home. <laughs> <laughs> Every, it seemed like every week for Friday for like the first three months or so together. Aww. Yeah. So we did lunch and he lives about 30 minutes away from me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I live here. You live here. We could pick a place in the middle. Just let me know. He found a place that was like seven minutes away from where I live, which I thought was really nice because he took into consideration. Hey, hey Paul, kudos for that. Kudos for that. Make it easier for the woman. I say this all the time. Men don't listen. If she literally has to just go down the street from her house, you're already in good graces. It's right. already a point. Right. Okay. And his day was busier than mine. We had lunch for maybe about an hour and a half. After lunch, we went over to a bakery that we both found out that we loved that was across the street from where we did lunch. And it actually pushed up to a meeting that he had. And he took his meeting in the car. And then he drove Aww. home after that. So what was the conversation like at this first this first lunch? Was was good conversation. We just spoke about common interests. Um, you know, the the food at the the establishment was pretty good, so that kind of helped to you know ease any um, um, you know, butterflies or anything like that. Um, Were you and- nervous? I always wonder if men. I know somebody like Akila and like me who's kind of a pro dater, <laughs> like. Don't really get nervous on first dates, but were you were you nervous or what was your feeling going into it? My feeling was I just hoped she looks like her profile picture. <laughs> Had you been catfished in the past? That is correct. Yes, I have. Been. Well, let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> so, because I always wonder what the point of catfishing is, because the person, if you're going, unless you're never going to meet up with them, but if you're going to meet up with them, like they're going to see you. So, what well, happened on your catfishing date? Well, well the hope is how, how it was explained to me is the hope is that from the conversation and the vibe you get, you'll overlook the Nah, cuz you just lied. You right. already lied to me once that's, and that's I don't correct. even know you yet. That's correct. So, um for me, it was a um last year, last summer, a young lady that had taken that had posted some pictures on Tinder from maybe about ten years ago. <laughs> when, um, I'm sorry, when she was a little, um, let's say, um, a little lighter, right? okay, a lighter, okay. Um, you know, thinner, lighter on her feet, yeah. so to speak. And um, <laughs> she wasn't. Um, so for, um, I, I was, I was fairly respectful. Um, so when but, she showed up, what did you say though? <laughs> well, well, so what I usually do if I'm if I'm going to meet someone, I'm usually there. Fairly early, mm-hmm. and you know, I know what they're wearing, et cetera. So I kind of have a look and see. Okay, here she is, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And, I, <laughs> and I saw her, and um, you know, kind of gave her a call. I was like, you know, are you wearing the such? And I forgot what she was wearing. Mm-hmm. She said yes. So I went over, introduced myself. I was like, well, hey, you, you know, like first off, how nice to meet you. Um, you don't really look like your pictures. And she's like, well, you know, um, those pictures are fairly old and, you know, I have put on a few pounds, et cetera. I'm just like, well, that's fine. How much is a few? Are we talking well, five was, or 35 or she, 55? We were talking about, think about a young lady that may be around, cause for whatever reason, I tend to meet taller women for whatever reason. So mm-hmm. she was maybe about 5'11". And, you know, the pics were, she was maybe 5'11", about 145 pounds, so fairly slim. Mm. And now she was maybe around 195, 200. Mm. So that was huge discrepancy. Right, right. right. Um, so Don't lie, people. Like, just be you. So it was a fairly quick conversation. It was like, hey, nice to meet you. However, I don't really appreciate we're talking. You've got these pictures posted. Now you look like this. And, you know, her kind of retort was, well, we had a good time. We had a good conversation. We vibed. And I was like, nah, no, thank you. To your point, you lied. It's not even about the physical thing. It's literally about the fact that I don't even know you yet and you're already lying. What else are you going to lie to me about? Don't do it, people. Just put a current picture up. Somebody will like it. Mm -hmm. But, like, you can't lie to people. It just doesn't work. Stop that. Anyway, back to you guys. <laughs> I just needed to do a PSA for catfishers. <laughs> I, I was a little nervous meeting him, though, because I was hoping that he would be taller than me. <laughs> Going back to the superficialness, I put on some flats and I hugged him. I was like, he's like 5'10 and three quarters. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Why did you wear flats? Because I wanted to see how tall he was. <laughs> I just don't want you to ever be that girl. You know what I notice tall girls do a lot? What? They always, in pictures, 
they do, you know, the head tilt thing. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm like, y'all are going to end up when you're old, you're going to end up with a lot of neck issues because you spent all your time minimizing your, your height and yourself walking around with your neck like this. I'm like, that has to hurt number one. But so I don't like it when women do that. So I just was wondering. I'll I'll wear my three, four inch heels with Paul. Good. And uh, we are good to go. (laughs) So after that first meeting, how did it, how did things propel from there? It propelled aggressively. Not aggressively, but <laughs> it was just fast, but in a good way. Uh, the next day, so that was Friday. Saturday, we ended up talking on the phone for like two hours later on that night because uh, we both ended up having plans. And then Sunday, we he actually had his kids that weekend. Sunday, I went to go watch. It was Super Bowl Sunday. I went to go watch the game with one of my girlfriends, and I told him, hey, we are at this bar after he dropped off his kids, he came to the bar and hung with us for another three hours or so. My girlfriend, she actually ended up leaving. She was like, are you sure y'all just met? Like, it looks like you guys have known each other for forever. And um, Oh, I love when there's just that, like, initial connection when it's just like, it just vibes mm-hmm. and it's easy. It's not like this whole, like, awkward sort of, like, it just vibes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that next weekend, we went out, had really, really good dates. He likes comedy shows, and I had told him I like sushi, so he planned for us to go to raw sushi and then to a comedy show. Really, really good conversation. Then we went to this late-night bar and had more food, more drinks. The next day, I had found a – I love live music, and there's a saxophonist that's really, really good. And I bought tickets to go and see that. He came to my place, cooked me dinner. Paul. Listen. Paul. Yes. I am a Jamaican man. We can cook. (laughs) Can you make stuffing, though? Just out of curiosity. I make stuffing from scratch. Oh. Okay. Way to shame other Jamaicans. We might have to have a (laughs) stuffing showdown at Thanksgiving. Right? Like, bring him to Thanksgiving (laughs) and, you know, an instructional video for the Jamaicans. (laughs) But this man made scallops. Rice cauliflower. Oh, so you didn't even make simple stuff. Like, you weren't, like, on, like, I made you some spaghetti. Like, you you went chef style. Scallops and rice Because ca- you knew she was trying to cut down on the carbs. Is that it? So you did the rice cauliflower? <laughs> like, I see it. The company I work for does a lot of um, vegetable products. Wow. So the rice cauliflower was, was something I discovered. I thought nice, it'd be good. Mm-hmm. nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So- and... And when he was at my house, I had some artwork that needed to be hung up. And I asked him if he would be the man in my manual labor. (laughs) And this man hung up pieces for me. I love it. So you could cook. You're handy. (laughs) Now, one of the unique things that I've always found interesting about you, Akilah, is Akilah, for a really long time, has always said that she wanted to date a man with kids because she wasn't sure that she wanted them herself. So she was like, well, if I date a man with kids, then he may or he may not want more kids. So, like, I'm good. Which I always found to be a very unique perspective because not, not a lot of women have that. And as you know, I've had the opposite approach up until now. I've had sort of a, I don't want to date a man with kids because, well, one, I don't want to deal with it. Two, you know, I want kids of my own someday. And, like, I want to make sure he wants the same thing. So, like... When did you discover that approach? Like, had you never wanted kids? Or is this just something you kind of discovered later in your life? So I don't think that... I've never been the type that's like, I want to have two kids and this is my wedding dress. All of those childhood things that you kind of think of. Right. I I love the kids. I volunteer. I interact with children a lot. But just the thought of having my own and raising a human being... I never, in my adult life, like post-20s, I was never, I never really, really wanted children. I always thought, you know, if I'm with someone and he wants kids, like, I can have a child. (laughs) One single good child. (laughs) I can have one child. And if you want more, we can adopt because there's a lot of children that are out there. And actually, when I was on Tinder post-Paul, I would meet guys and one had, like, a five-year-old 
And I'm thinking, you still have to save for college. I met this one guy who had an eight year old, an uh, eight month old, and I'm thinking, you still have to pay for daycare. An eight month old? And where's the baby mama? <laughs> right? Like, like, <laughs> that baby is fresh. That baby is like still warm. <laughs> um, but it wasn't something that, so I would joke around and say with my friends, like, I don't want any kids, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't, I would never truly say it to someone else because there's this thing of, if someone, if you say you don't want any kids, it's like, well, why not? Like, it's like, it's like you wouldn't say it to men. Yeah, you know, like, what's wrong with you? I, I, I actually told this one man actually a couple of weeks before I met Paul, and he asked me. He said, "Are you selfish? Are you lazy? <laughs> <laughs> why are you lazy? Uh, do you know I got several degrees and a job, and I do a lot? Like, right, like wh- but you, I don't want you don't want kids. So why are you so lazy? Right, like I am neither selfish. Why have you accomplished nothing in your life? <laughs> right. I have traveled the world. I have degrees. But it so means nothing if you me. don't want kids. <laughs> right. Um, but I, I got more comfortable with it. As, so I'm 32 now. And I look at my life and I'm like, do I really want to birth the child and raise a human being? Like that's 18 guaranteed years of your life plus more. Plus forever. <laughs> and, and, and I don't want it. And I would think like I would like to meet a man who had kids that were in middle school or high school because they're self-sufficient adults now. Right. And I could be a positive influence. I You could be like the cool auntie. Right. You know, yeah. And also I my mother was a single mom. Her and my dad separated when I was very young and then she got together with my stepfather when I was a freshman in high school. Mm-hmm. And my stepfather was great. He did not try to raise us. He did not try to impart different things on us. He was good to my mother. He truly helped us when needed. And I thought that that's a great example. Um, And so I just thought that high school, middle school, good age, as long as they're not little snots, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, I never really truly wanted to have my own. So did you tell Paul this initially? Yes. How did you feel about that? Or, or, or were you relieved by it? I was extremely happy. <laughs> so, Paul, like in your um, in your dating experiences, right. da- dating and having children, how old are your kids again? My children have a son and a daughter. Yep. Uh, my daughter is 13 years old. My son is 14 years old. Okay. So was that daunting for some of the women that you dated and how did they feel about it? Well, so I, I'm... I think similar to Akil, I'm very straightforward. So one of the things that I let be known up front is I don't want any children. Anymore. Uh, any more children. Right, right, right. I don't want any more children. Ideally, don't really want you to have children either, which is probably a strange... Well, no, it. because then that's, you know, um, multiply the amount. Exactly. <laughs> I get it. I, I look I at it. it from a financial standpoint, i.e., hey, if I've got two children and my children, we travel extensively, we go to various places, um, they're... They were born, one was born in the UK, one was born here in New York. So um, to then bring someone on with other children and then the financial responsibility, unless she is in a similar financial place than I am, it's unfair to my children. Right, right. right. Um, so that's something that I was, I'm very clear, I was very clear about, you know, mm-hmm. up front is I don't really want any more children. Um, and ideally, I would like you not to have children as well. So was that? hard in in dating because i assume that most men women in this age group like you know 20s 30s late 30s did want that if they didn't already have it so i'm 42 years old and i tend to meet women in their early 30s mid 30s who if they are single with no children they want children right forward right so was it fairly you know probably not difficult conversation from my end but for them if they wanted children then that's probably not something they wanted to hear and i'm very steadfast in that I do not want any more children. Right. So, yeah. See, when I met my boyfriend, I said the the opposite. I was like, "Hey, I noticed you have kids." <laughs> and, you know, you do you want more? And I understand if you don't, but like I do, so let's be on the same page now and not move forward if we're not, you know? And he said he did, remarkably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I, I did want two, but I think I'm good with one now just <laughs> in terms of total numbers. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I think that that's very important. It's a conversation that a lot of people don't have. We had this children conversation maybe during our first date if not our second conversation, because he wanted to be sure that I don't want any more children and I wanted to, and then I was comfortable letting him know that. 
Now, Akila, let me ask you this. Do you think you'll ever change your mind? Do you think that it's possible that the state that you're at now is based on your life experiences thus far? And there is a possibility that your life experiences could change. There is a possibility that maybe being in the presence of children in in this capacity, you know, being a mentor and, and maybe a stepmom sort of figure, do you think it might make you say, you know, I never really wanted this, but like maybe I do. Like, could it change? I honestly don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I've 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 mentored young women in some capacity for the past nine years of my life. Ever since I got out of college, I was mentoring high school students or I go to the Boys and Girls Club now and I work with first graders and fourth graders. And there is, without a doubt, I'm sure that having a child brings this unconditional love and joy that someone has that I will never know. But there is also this fear and concern that that also brings that I will never know either. Right. Um, I am very happy with the life that I'm able to provide myself. And I know that having children would drastically change that. And I am a very 10 and 2, black and white, scheduled calendar person. And that's out the window. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) That's out the window when you have kids, you know? So... I, I don't think so. My mother, she would love it if I changed my mind. She jokes and says that she's going to be the only person in the nursing home getting her diapers changed and changing diapers at the same time. <laughs> 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 because I'm 32. I don't have any kids. My sister is 34. Does she want kids? Your sister? She could have a child. I honestly think she's going to adopt a child from somewhere. And I have a little brother who is 23. And so... There's still hope. No. There's, there, there, there is hope for him. But my mother has, she she says that she wants kid grandchildren, but she's like, that's just my desire. I'm not going to push that on right, you all, right, you know? Right. Um, but no, I don't, there's so many uncertainties with children. I I just can't. I don't want it. But I could be a part of a child's life. Right. But I don't want to birth and raise a right. child. <laughs> now, have you met the, the kids? I have not met the kids. Paul and I have been dating for four months. Okay. And honestly, I, and we talked about this too, maybe like week two. And he was like, when do you want to, or even what are your thoughts on meeting the kids? And I was like, I don't want to meet your kids unless we are very serious. Like, I think that a ring or something of that nature is coming just because I think that it's a lot to be involved in a child's life and, playing house you know like if you bring me around now who knows if I'm going to be around for another two months or so and also I saw it from when I grew up my I met my stepdad maybe two months before my mom and him got married and I was older you know it's not about me it's how are you treating right my mom and so if and he talks about his kids often his kids are a part of our daily conversations he's a great father and they seem like well behaved great children if they seem like little snots then i would be <laughs> like <laughs> let, let me meet these two um but i don't i don't have a desire to meet them until i know that him and i are really truly you know there right he don't want me to meet them either now paul how how long have you been um separated from their mom mm, four years four years yeah give or take a few months yeah four years so have you dated anybody seriously in that four years no not at all no has anybody met your children no really Wow. Did you want to date seriously when you met me? <laughs> Akilah's like, let me take Ooh, over the mic okay, real quick. So um. <laughs> she was very clear in terms of her intentions. Um, and yeah, so I, I guess at this stage I was, um, I have a fairly busy work schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's work and children. And I'm very, I, I share custody with my ex-wife. Mm. So I am very much a part of children's lives. Um, right. So, um, you know, for me, the focus was work 
and, and, and children. So really, I didn't really, I hadn't really met anyone that I really felt that, you know, we connected in a way and, you know, they were, they were the, the, the type of person I could see, you know, being um, a stepmom to my children. Now, the great thing is they've got a good mom. Um, she's a great mom. And so I'm not looking for a mother for my children. Um, for me, it's more about the connection between that specific individual and myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the children are an, are an add on. Right. right, but for me, it, it's more about our connection, what we do, how we get along, um, you know, how we how we do things, and then the children are just an addition, they're right. a complement to that. Right. So, yeah. Is your ex is she remarried or anything like that? She's not remarried because then she wouldn't get any more alimony. So, um, <laughs> cheaper to keep her. No. <laughs> so, um, she, she did indicate I'm to me. I'm single till y'all 18. <laughs> she, she, um, she did indicate she was dating someone, but um, they haven't met the children um, as yet. And I guess she probably has a similar philosophy to myself. Right. My philosophy, as I told the kill, is hey, you can meet the kids when they graduate college. Um, you know. Really? Grad school, you know, if they decide to <laughs> He <get> playing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, that's not happening. That's too long. <laughs> I'm in no rush to get married. But college well, is a good eight years. They're going to be in grad school. Like, wait, who are you? Again? Right. Oh, I did see pictures of you. Yes. Hi, Akila. <laughs> he playing. I, I, have I, you I, told I, them about her? Um, I, I have mentioned. So, um, so Akila was very nice. She got me an excellent Father's Day gift. What did you um, get him? I got him a Bluetooth soundbar for his TV and for his phone for his home entertainment. Oh, nice. So it was great. Um, my son helped me set it up. And I was like, oh, by the way, I was just like, um, my girlfriend got this for me. He was like, oh, he was like, this is a nice gift. <laughs> so they, they think she has taste. Um, as she does uh, my my daughter I told my daughter um, my daughter is, is, is natural from a hair standpoint but she um, she straightens her hair sometimes um, and she really likes to do buns I'm just like well she does a really nice bun as well so, um, so at some point you know she I love a good her. bun as you know yes you do <laughs> Ken, you had a top knot oh that the to- is, that's my signature that's everything I only recently st- I mean I still do it but once in a while I, I do you know switch it up a bit yes so have they expressed any desire to meet her since you bring her up? No, they have not. Um, my, my children, so I have a very personal close relationship with the children. Mm-hmm. So they're very much a, um, especially my daughter, she's, she's I mean, my, my son's probably more of a daddy's boy. My daughter's fairly protective of her dad as well. Right. So, um, you know, for them, they're not, they haven't really expressed any interest. Um, for them, it's more along the lines of, I you know, they'd still want me, I guess, to their self, so to speak. That right, makes sense. right. So, so. Can I see pictures of the kids? Now that I'm a girlfriend, stepmom, I, uh, <laughs> I'm actually interested in these things. <laughs> so that's one thing that I would say is challenging about dating a man with children that's also so involved. It's just the time aspect, right? right? So he's very involved with his kids, and they have split custody. And so we see each other every other weekend, Because every other weekend, he then has his children. Right. And he travels for work Monday through Thursday. He's in New York. And then he comes to Dallas. And it's either my weekend or his kid's weekend. But I think that one value in that is because his time is so split, I know that I'm important. I know that I'm a priority because he is so intentional with his time. And the fact that he's doing this. You know, he mentioned, you know, I have to think about is this type of woman that I can bring around my kids. You know, you think you date other guys who don't have children, they might not necessarily be thinking that. And so right. there's a long term aspect that you're thinking of because you have children or because you've had a very important relationship that didn't work out that you're you're like, I want my children to then see a positive relationship. Right. That right. will work out with the next person that I bring around them. That makes sense. They're what, 13 and 14? Mm-hmm. Aw. I could tell your son is a daddy's boy because he's like all up on your shoulder like, daddy. <laughs> and they dress alike. Like, I haven't met him but in the pictures that I see. <laughs> they dress alike. <laughs> now, do you and their mom have a good relationship? We're cordial. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's you know, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We co-parent, we're cordial. How long were you guys together? 
10 years. Wow. Okay. So have you guys talked, I don't know if this is too soon to ask, but have you guys talked marriage, future, et cetera? Yeah, we have. We've talked about our openness to marriage. Like, he's definitely the type of man that I could see me marrying. And I think that he would say the same. Have we spoken specifically, you know, like, this is us? I mean, we've only been dating for four months, but he does want to remarry. He knows that I do want to get married. I will meet the kids before college. (laughs) Because he knows I'm not waiting that long. (laughs) He jokes, he jokes. But we definitely have talked about that. We talked about that within our first week of meeting each other. Um, And it was actually kind of quick. We met each other. And then a week later, he asked me, he was like, I know what I like. I like you. You and I should be together. And I was like, and exclusive. Like, let's let's throw an exclusivity there. I like that. I like that because these things have to be defined. You can't, you can't make any assumptions. You know what I mean? Like, I think what a lot of women do, and it's it's sort of sad to me, is they're maybe playing these roles, whether that be girlfriend or wife or whatever the role is, and because they're playing the role, they're making the assumption that, that something is what it may not be. Mm-hmm. So you might be bringing your man lunch at work every day and texting him and calling him and you guys are spending time together, but until you have a conversation where that is laid out and it's defined, it's not. And I'm not, I'm never going to be mad at a man. And, and pe- well, women get so mad when it's like, well, like men are like, well, we never said it was. And she's like, well, I've been calling and texting and doing this for you and doing that for you. And it's like, but I'm sorry. Like, I, I like things laid out. And so it's like, if we, if I want you to be my man, we're going to sit down and we're going to have a conversation and say, okay, so great. We're in an exclusive relationship. Here's what this means for me. Here's what this means to me. Here's what I will give you. Here's what I would want out of you. And there needs to be a conversation like stop assuming things. Tanisha, that is so true. And the reason why I threw exclusive in there with him is because the guy who I dated a year before I dated him, him and I FaceTime every day, take a trip to Miami over New Year's, go and do this, all of these other things. But we didn't have that exclusivity conversation. And Did so, you assume that it was, though? I assumed that, and we ended up being in the same city. And so he and he lives in Dallas, I live in Dallas. I assumed that once we were in Dallas that we would be together because for the past year we had been, you know, doing all this doing stuff boyfriend, together. boyfriend, girlfriend type activities and spending right. time and, yeah. Right. But so we got together and we, you know, like had drinks, had like a fun day party day. And like that, that conversation didn't come up. And I was like, do I say something? I don't want to lose him. Do I not? <laughs> you and say then, something. Right. And so if we you had, see something, say something, <laughs> see something, say something. So then we ended up having a, a happy hour and I was like, I feel like we're friends. And <laughs> looking back six months ago, I didn't think that we would be friends if we were in the same city. And he was right. like, I'm on some new city, new me. I was like, okay. And so I didn't have that conversation with him. And I was assuming. And so with Paul, I didn't want there to be any assumptions. And he knew that. That's why he was like, I was I was direct. You know, this is what I want. And if a man is open to that, then he will say yes or no. And mm, I'd, I'd rather so leave with important. a no. And no. I'd rather leave with a no than stay with uncertainty. Right. Like, a no is great because then you know. Right. And they respect that. And yes. they might think that's a little sexy, too. You know? <laughs> well, now that you say it out loud like that. Right, right, right. Ooh. So what did you think, Paul, when she said that? Well, I thought it was interesting. Um, <laughs> Not sexy. <laughs> I wouldn't say sexy. But interesting is one of those words that don't mean nothing. <laughs> like, I thought it was interesting. It was interesting. Um, I, you know, I, I appreciated the, um, the, 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 the directness. Um, and um, yeah, I guess at the time, um, you know, I, I liked her enough. So that there's an old saying that my, my dad used to tell me that, you know, um, or my dad, yeah. He's like, most men know what they want. They know the type of woman that, you know, they can see themselves with right. um, fairly early on, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, you know, Akilah, um, from from 
you know, knowing her and seeing her, it felt felt right. And, you know, I didn't at the time, and I still don't now, um, I did not mind um, the exclusive tag, mm-hmm. if, if um, so to speak. So, yeah. So it was interesting. Um, <laughs> to, to, to your point, no one's ever, you know, been that direct and upfront in terms of, hey, I want an exclusive relationship. It was always you know, kind of assumed. Right. Um, but, you know, she was very much, hey, this is what I want, and let's kind of acknowledge that. That's what I love about Akila. Yeah. <laughs> she gonna let you know. We don't play no games. <laughs> now, Akila, this is what I'm curious about. So, you don't want children, and that's very well established to yourself and to the people that you date. So, if children aren't so important, why is marriage important? Or is it? So, I would question, is marriage important? Because you mentioned wanting to get married. Mm-hmm. So if the kid, if kids aren't a part of that equation, why is marriage a part of that equation? Because I want his life insurance when he dies. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> you gotta be practical out here. <laughs> no, I I think that you can say that you are exclusive, right? And him and I could be exclusive, and we could decide to be life partners but once you have that we are married peace to your relationship you are less prone to walk away there are more things that you are willing to work through it's it changes I don't know I've never been married but in my mind I think that it changes your mindset it's it it makes it legally official and I don't know. I just I just feel that and maybe it's all the American ways in society that has impressed itself upon me. But I think that if we know that we want to be together for a long time, what we think is forever, then why not get married and make it official and, and let me be your last name? Right. Yeah. I've been thinking about the concept of marriage a lot lately and why I want to get married and what it means to me and why other people get married and why they get divorced. And honestly, I I think I'm kind of at the point now where I'm not sure that it's a hundred percent necessary. Like I think that I actually think the reason that it is necessary is for kids. Maybe like when you have children, okay, just to unite the family and, you know, have everybody together. But in really thinking about all this, I'm like, is it just a piece of paper? Does it change anything? Because here's the thing about marriage. Like divorce exists still like, Mm -hmm. so you can get married tomorrow. Yes. And there's commitments to that. There's, you know, like there, there's a future to that, but you can also just get divorced, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? So I'm like, if the out for marriage exists, does, does, is marriage all that important? I think there's an out for marriage and there's an out for relationships. But you said it's important if you have kids. And granted, I don't want to birth any children, but he has kids. And so if you decide to marry me, I'm officially a part of your family. Mm -hmm. So I think that that marriage piece will help or it it establishes that, yep, I'm a part of your family unit and I'm not just your girlfriend or your significant other. You have shown the people in your life that I am important enough to you to do this. Paul, did you have a thought? So I think marriage, um, you kind of put skin in the game, right? Right. So um, when when you do get married, then you have to kill the incentive is there to not depart or break fairly quickly. Um, you know, because of the concept of marriage from a societal standpoint, you know, it, it's then um, seen as, hey, you know, I, I need to work this out because I am husband and wife. But definitely if uh-huh. we get married, we signing a prenup because <laughs> I'm coming in with my own and he got well, mouths to I feed. Am, and am, so I, I want to make sure am, I'm leaving. <laughs> I am I am very much in favor of that. Um, now, Paul, uh-huh. since you've been married before, mm-hmm. have your thoughts on marriage change, having been married for 10 years and then getting separated and getting divorced like has it changed the way you see marriage and the way you would do it again because you've done it already no i mean i i still wholeheartedly believe in the concept um of marriage um you know my previous marriage um doesn't really impact my feelings um on marriage going forward 
Um, the only difference is, you know, the, the child, the child, the children aspect of it. But um, for marriage, I, I like it. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it um, per se. Um, I, I can see your point in terms of, hey, you know, divorce exists. So really and truly you're doing it for one, the children, um, because if you look at marriage historically, it's kind of acknowledgement of paternity from the man to the woman. Right. Um, so so that makes sense. Um, but in the modern era, I, I still do believe that from a societal standpoint, you do need that bond. You do need a level of commitment. You know, each person needs to understand that they have skin in the game mm-hmm. um, in, in terms of that commitment. Um, and, and, and then I, I then believe in that then fosters that piece that you have to work through certain things right. in order to make that work. Right. And, and we've also kind of talked about this. It's like, I really need to like you. Like, if we're going to get married, you know, because <laughs> because I feel sometimes when people are married and they have children, sometimes you stay together for the children. Right. And right. Not, yeah. But not him for you. and I aren't going to have any children together. Right. And so it so has to be about you guys. It has to be. And that's kind of what he mentioned. I, his kids are first and his most highest priority in his life, you know, and I and I know that. But if him and I were to get married, it has to be about us. And he was like, the children are then an addition to that relationship because that's not what's going to hold us together. That could honestly be something that could break us apart right. a little bit because I'm not his children's mother. Right. But we have to understand that this is us. This is our bond. Yes, this is what we want to do. And we think that it will better our lives, better his children's lives all together. I like that you guys have had really honest conversations about this because I think that so early on in a relationship like this where somebody may have kids before um, and somebody may not want kids, I think that people will skirt around a lot of the issues because it's like, well, we're getting along so well and let's just kind of like, you know, save that stuff and we'll get to it when we get to it, which is it's not good because like stuff is always going to come up. It just is. And so it might as well come up sooner than later and you can nip it in the bud on the front end versus the back end. So like, I think it's really mature and really thoughtful that you guys have already had these conversations so early on. Yeah. This is the most adult relationship I've been in (laughs) in my life. And I will be 33 in two weeks. But I think that it's, it's also a part of, him having being married before and he's a very thoughtful man you know and so he thinks through this stuff and we are open to having these conversations and sometimes the conversations feel hard or awkward but you have to have these conversations like when you talked about your calendar I remember listening you were like you were on 17 days and then you just said this and I was thinking oh no they yeah. went back oh, that's down what it was. Seventeen. Zero. It was yeah. It was seventeen you when I posted, on, not twenty. Yeah. You were on seventeen, yeah. and then you you know, and so, but you know that there are things that you have to discuss and talk about because when we get, if we get married or whenever I get married, I'm not going to have a big wedding. I don't want a Cinderella dress. Like I don't either. You know, like let's go to the courthouse and let's have a really nice honeymoon. Yeah. Let's do I'm with you. Let's like, make sure this house is I've been paid in too for. many weddings and seen several divorces from those weddings and I'm like, uh, you know what? I don't need any of that. Like, I, I, I'm not stressing myself out. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I just refuse. Yeah. But I think also, I mean, one of the things is, you know, time, right? Time mm-hmm. is one of the things that you can't get back, right? Right. You can always make money. You can always get another job, et cetera. But right. you can't. So, you know, Akilah mentioned we had a very adult conversation. I'm not, you know, my I'm predisposed not to waste anyone's time because I don't want my time wasted. Right. So I'd rather be very direct and upfront in terms of having those discussions you know, initially, mm-hmm. um, so that, you know, there, there are no misunderstandings going forward. Right. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm very much, you know, about um, being straightforward. Hashtag one adulting is fun. <laughs> adulting is fun, man. I mean, I'm the oldest of eight children, so I felt like I've been an adult. Most of <laughs> your life. My entire life. You know, so, yeah. so Akila, can I ask you for some advice for maybe a woman who doesn't want children and as a woman who... Ha- has known for a very long time that that wasn't your path, like how to deal with people. Like how do you deal with people when they are looking at you, maybe in an abnormal way or looking at you like you're not a regular woman or that you're lazy (laughs) because you don't want to have children. Yeah. I actually had a conversation with a woman maybe three months ago and she was maybe 50 
And I had expressed to her that I'm dating somebody and that I didn't want any children. And she was like, I used to think that women who didn't want children are selfish. And I just don't understand that because my children are the best thing in the world that has happened to me. And for someone who doesn't want them, I'd, I'd say, you know, I have a very purpose-driven, full life. And so adding children doesn't necessarily make your life, it adds something to it, but it doesn't take away from your core, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'd say just be confident in knowing what you want and think back to why you want these things. Why why do we think that the family should be a man, a woman, two kids, and a dog? I hate pets. Same. <laughs> you know? <laughs> look, look to what makes you happy and don't feel like you have to conform to find that significant other because you might be able to find somebody who actually is on the same page as you. And so I think that it's okay to not want children. It doesn't mean that you're selfish. It doesn't mean that you don't love kids. It doesn't mean that you aren't capable of, of, of loving or, or doing something else. It just means that you are, I think you're self-aware of how you want to spend your time, how you, you know, what, what is important to you. And you can be just as impactful, if not more, by living your life purposely instead of by living your life through raising a child. Right. So just do you, boo. <laughs> do you, boo. I love it, Akila. You're great, by the way. Oh, I love you, too. I Thank have you. always just admired your, like, you know yourself and you're very bold with it. And, like, I've always loved that about you. Like, you're not, like, you don't walk into a room like, hi, I'm Akila. Here's no. what I think. Like, you're just like, I'm Akila. Here it is. Like, you like it or you don't. Great. Yes. Do it or don't. Thanks. Um, so Paul, I'm, I'm glad you're in my friend's life and I like you and I want to see this go great places. Thank you. <laughs> Paul, is there any advice you have as a man with children for, for maybe men that are out there dating or trying to, or trying to meet somebody? Um, I would say be direct. Um, so definitely um, go out there um, and, and, and let your prospective, you know, girlfriend or boyfriend know what you want, um, know what your expectations are and, and, and be, be very upfront, you know, early on. Um, to your point, you mentioned earlier that, you know, if you vibe well, it's kind of like, OK, well, maybe some misgivings so we'll put that off to the to, because you know we're vibing so well right. but you know if you know as as a, as a mature gentleman if you're in your mid-30s your, your 40s as a man that's when you're starting to come into your own in terms of maturing and really knowing what you want um then you know let that person know what you want as well um and don't be afraid of losing that person you might find that hey you know they're 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 aligned with you and if they're not then that's perfectly okay right you know you'll move on to someone else that might be aligned with what you're trying to do so I'm loving this mature couple. <laughs> it's so adult. Like, <laughs> I am now an advocate for mature conversations. It's like, don't, don't wait. You know, if you're thinking it, see say something, it. say something. Right, Tanisha. right, right. <laughs> you said that, I, you know, see something, say something. Um, thank you guys for coming on. Um, this has been lovely. We're actually heading out to a comedy show after this. We're doing a little double date. So they're in New York for the weekend. So I'm going to show them some New York fun. Um, and to you out there, thank you so much for listening tonight. As always, you can reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, where can, at Tanisha Wood, where can people reach out to you? Can they reach out? My social media is private. <laughs> <laughs> So don't call Akila, she'll call you. <laughs> and I haven't posted on Instagram in like a week. It's it's very, it's very boring. Like you don't want to reach out to me. <laughs> I'm only on Twitter. It's at Paul Worrell. I'm, I'm very straightforward. Um, and, and yeah, that's it. Dang, you gave your first and your last. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to hide. <laughs> He's an open book. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, please leave a comment or like and subscribe on iTunes. And until next time, wish me love. Hello again, my lovely listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of DRL. If you like the show, be sure to go on iTunes and leave a rating and also write a review. And don't forget to share with your friends and tell them all about DRL. Thank you so much for supporting.